As I promised, I'm doing the tutorial for a paper bag mini, a really basic one. The paper bags I get from Crash You Love in the UK, and the bags are 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and 7 eighths this way. And what we want to do with those is to cut them down. I mean, you can use paper bags whatever size you want to but if you can get hold of the ones that I use then that's fair enough if not just use the ones you've got just do the things that I'm doing it doesn't matter you can measure for your mats and things quite easily so for my paper bags as I said they were 11 and 3 quarters by 5 and 7 eighths and I've just cut a slither so whichever paper bag you have uh, it's folded like that at the bottom most of them are similar most of them are the same sort of thing <coughs> made the same way you need to cut just the slither off to open that up so let's get rid of that so now the paper bags open at the bottom so you'll have this piece which is the flat piece at the bottom and we want to stick this piece don't stick it up here so that it sticks to the back and I've come right to the end of my pot of glue so I'm using a cocktail stick now to get out the last little bit because it won't come out and I'm just going to glue that down I'm using the scotch quick dry and I'll just pop some glue in there these are fairly thick plus um, plastic bags I was going to say a <laughs> paper bag so I'm not worried about putting the wet glue on them. If they were really thin ones, I wouldn't put it on because it would make them cockle like anything. But these are quite nice and thick ones, nice brown paper ones. Let's do that a little bit. So, yeah, make sure you stick down the little flap, which will have come up where you cut it. So that little bit of the flap that's loose. There, just stick that down. And just hold that for a minute. Get rid of that surplus. And then what you'll be left with, so then peel it, don't make it, don't let it have a chance to stick to the other side because we want that open so you'll be able to get your hand in. This is going to become a little pocket and one side will be for a big tag in there and the other side will be to put your binding in. So you need to do that to all five, I've got five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yep, yeah, five paper bags do that to all five so the next thing we need to do is cut the envelope down I've cut mine to ten and a quarter that's because I'm going to use the ephemera vintage garden sheet boudoir set again and I'm going to use the pages hole this time as I've said and that's going to go on my paper bag page like that and I want it to get to go under that pocket just slightly so that's why I've cut mine down to that. You can cut yours to whatever you want to. Then, here, we need a binding strip the other side. So what I've done is I've cut the five binding strips to go with my pages. And then I, I've inked the edges of the paper bag and the binding strips with the Distress Ink, the vintage photo. And... After doing that, I've cut one of the pages up into one inch strips and inked those and I'm going to, I, well I have, pop them, pop them on the binding strip each side, one each side. I'm going to use that, this just makes it a little bit more decorative. Make a half inch mark top and bottom. If you've got so top and bottom and then draw a pencil mark. If you've got the Tim Holtz ruler like me, you can just do it off the side, which is good. I love this ruler. I wouldn't be without it now. can't use an ordinary one when I pick an ordinary one up now. So that's given us a half an inch. That's the middle. And then I'm going to come up that that line about an, about an inch and a quarter. So put a mark at an inch and a quarter from each side so I'll just take that up there and do it like that so an inch and a quarter from each long side will give you where you want to punch your holes 
Okay, I've been looking for my crocodile, which I can't find because I've tidied up my room. And why is it that every time you tidy up your room, you can't find a thing? When it's all messy, I know where everything is. So I'm going to do on my big bite then, because I can't find the crocodile. <laughs> Here's my big bite. And I'm using the biggest hole, the 3 sixteenths. And just where you've put your pencil marks across that line, just make your two holes. We use a half inch strip of can't find my scissors. Ah ha ha! Hiding, it's hiding in there and on the back. Oh, look at that! Do you know? I thought they joined it. Then how stupid am I? It's a piece of <laughs> I thought that they joined it. I'm crazy. Since I've been 50, my brain has just gone to mush. Okay, so I've got my tape back and front on there now. And then I'll be able to put it in for my binding. There's a couple of things we need to do to your paper bag before we put the binding in. Now at the side here, we've got this piece. We don't want that to flap up like this because that's all open there. What we need to do with that is to stick that bit down so you can use some glue. I'm going to use my scotch and then open it up and just that triangle that's in that opening, you'll see the triangle there, you can pop your glue on that and then stick that down. And again, we'll open it up. If I turn it around the other way, you can see what I mean about the triangle piece. There, that triangle. It's not easy doing it with a cocktail stick, is it? You need to waste not want not. I don't waste any of my last bits of glue, you see? I'm very good. And then pop that shut. Okay, so one page design will give you... Uh, six lots of one inch strips for your binding strips and then every one you can just use the little template make your holes oh, I'm out of camera now, sorry <laughs> move it back and then then I'm not in camera so make your holes and then what if you were using glue instead of um, double sided tape then that strip would help you know where your half inch is so you could hold it on there pop your glue on that half inch that's left and then slip it in there and then you'd know where to come up to because you've got your inch strip on there and that would be, you could take it off and it would be in the right place so that's really handy just need to put a double sided tape on all of those and then we'll pop as I said I used the half inch one on there and then you can pop that in because I've got the half inch tape I know where to put it to oh actually I'll use my my strip just to show how you can use it so you have to be very careful when you're putting it in because obviously it's sticky on both sides so you don't want it to stick down before you actually get that in there so pop one end in is probably the easiest to do to where you want it and then gradually pop that other end in to the same point and then come to the edge of your strip and give you that inch there we go, and then we'll get the bone folder and just make sure that that's stuck down really, really well on there. That's given a bit of strength as well to that binding. And then what we can do is punch our holes in there because we made our hole marks. So again, we'll pop it in. I'll put it in the big bite or the crocodile if I could find it. <laughs> think you're doing really well when you have a tidy up but it doesn't always work does it 
And now I've popped some double sided tape on the back of that page and in the edges and pop that down and what we need to do is just make that into a pocket and pop this down as well. Uh, you do need to take just a slight bit off the length of this. I've used one of the pages again and cut a section for the pocket. This double sided tape, the backing is terrible, you just can't get it off, it's awful. I don't know whether it's because I've had it for a while, it's, it's a nightmare. It just will not come off. All very well, but it does drive you nuts. <laughs> oh goodness, it's like watching paint dry. Sorry guys. Okay, so that's going on there. Put a funny little bit in there and pop that on there. Then all we need to do is just lift that up and stick our sides down. You can do it with wet glue because this is quite thick so um, I think I might do it with wet glue because it is quite strong this glue. So I'm just going to put some on there. That scotch glue is nice and strong. And uh, that side as well. Make sure you come right to the edges. And that's that. Let's give it that excess. And that's the front of your page. So what we need to do now is you can either make this into a pocket. This measures three and three quarters by five and five eighths. The five and five eighths gives me just a slight border around the sides. And if you want to make it in a pocket into a pocket, do just the two short sides and that left hand side and leave that side open. And this piece, which I'll use just some plain card on there, and I'm going to do some stamping on it. This will take a six by four photo and it was six and a half by five and five eighths again. For the cover we need a piece of card and I'm using signage from work that I use. It's thick board, really thick. Uh, if you know anyone who works in a shop or retail then perhaps you could try and get them to get you some of their um, advertising boards and things and that's what I use um, or you could use some thick very 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 thick cardboard or chipboard uh, mount board whatever you want to use the measurement of mine is 11 and a half by six and a quarter inch mark all the way around if you want to uh, I wanted a nice big um, fold over so that's one whole sheet there and then I need to overlap so I've cut a two and a half inch piece, let me just check it was, yeah two and a half inches off another sheet of a contrasting pattern that's the one I chose and that's the contrasting pattern and on this one I'm going to just mark a half an inch um, so I know where to overlap and that will just draw a line down. That's my overlap. So I'm going to put some double sided tape on that. Just get my half inch score. Actually I've used the half inch score tape and then that saved me measuring. Although I've already measured. So I'll do that. That's my scissors again. And that's where we need to overlap to. And that should, in theory, <laughs> in theory, give us an inch. Border all the way round. There you go. So now when we put that on there, that board on there, 
we've got an inch all the way around. Now you need to put some adhesive on the back of your board, whether it be glue or ATG or tape. So I've covered the whole thing with ATG and I'm going to pop that on, whoops, not like that, pop that on with an inch border all the way around approximately straight in and cut, leaving around about, as I said, an eighth of an inch at that corner. I need to do all of those. You've got a Tim Holtz ruler, you can just put that on there and you can see the eighth of an inch. I'm going to put that. I'll do that on four of them. And then we can just fold that over. Like that. Then we want to put some ATG around the sides. Oh, it's actually behaving itself today. That's good. Well, oh, perhaps I shouldn't say anything too soon. The best thing to do, as I said, is to just pop it down on the desk and bend it. Uh, do your long edges first. Turn it round. Bend it again. And then that will give you a nice edge. And then we can do the short sides. So now we put the lining in the cover and then we can pop the pages in. So I'm going to just centre my page in. The binding strip needs to go against the back of the cover so what you have is that against the cover and then an even space each side and on that side the three sides to be more or less even anyway that is a tiny bit longer that side but more or less then what you need to do is make a mark inside your holes and then we can punch some holes, you want the big ones, the same as on the pages. Oh. When you've done your first cover, you can put them together so that you know that they're going to be in the right place and wrong side to wrong side and then just make some marks through your holes so you know where the holes have got to go. some holes in that as well. I'm going to use some big eyelets on the cover. Um, you can choose to put eyelets on the pages if you want to. It's up to you. So set some eyelets in there and then we'll be ready to mount the pages in. So once you've done your eyelets and set your eyelets in your covers decide which you want back and front and then you can get hold of your pages. I'm going to use some book rings, um, uh, what they call them book rings don't they but binding rings I call them but book rings. These are woodware and they're 38mm ones and I got these from Crafts You Love in the UK. And then all you do is just, as I said, if you want to put eyelets all through your pages, you can. I haven't because that was quite strong card that I put in. And I think it'll be fine. And then just thread it through. And then close them up. Um, then you can tie some ribbon in if you want to cover those up. So just make some lengths oh, about six inches long and then tie them on as many as you want to cover it. And then what I'm going to do is from the sheets I've cut out some bits. I'm going to put some black paper 
as a bit of a backing to make it stand out a little bit more and then I've cut out my favourite page and I'm going to 3D this so I'm going to lift that up with foam squares I'm going to cut the pen out and lift that up with 3D squares as well I've also cut another boot there's a, a little um, card that's there with the boot on as well so I cut that out from there and I'm going to 3D that and then I'm going to use these and just pop those behind there and then here I'm going to fill it in with flowers um, from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'm going to use some leaves and some uh, the roses and fill that in so I've got some texture and some height on there uh, and then I'll post a photo of that for you and I hope you have a go at the tutorial and I'll see you again soon